Сейчас я вижу звук, да? Один-два раза. Okay, I'm glad that you've come back and we have to come back to our presentations. Uh, just recently we've seen how we make public transportation better, how we help companies to manage maintenance services. Now let's turn to agriculture. Uh, Katerina Alexandrova from uh, product manager uh, in this uh, product, in the new product Hectera will tell you about what it is, where it has, and how you can benefit from all the functionality of the new agricultural solution by Gurtam. So let, let's welcome her on stage. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. And uh, now we are going to talk about Hectera, an agricultural solution recently developed by Gurtam. Uh, you probably know that uh, the release of Hectera took place on the 28th of May this year, and it was a highly anticipated release. Many of our partners have been asking us for such a solution for a long time. And finally, Gurtam decided to develop its own application in the sphere of agriculture. I'm Katerina Alexandrova, a product manager for this uh, product for Hectera. And in this uh, presentation, we are going to talk about who are potential clients of Hectera, its target market, also um, what Hectera can do, its main function. Uh, I will make a brief overview of the interface of Hectera and we will talk about the role of the integrator in offering Hectera to the end customer. And finally, I will share with you some sources of further information about the application and the contacts with us developers. So let's start. Uh, Hectera can be used um, in agricultural companies of small and medium size. And by that we mean um, farm, uh, farms with lands up to 20,000 hectares or if calculated in units up to 100 agricultural machines. Uh, besides, using Hectera suggests integrational processes. Uh, this could be integration with uh, any custom software used by the end client or integration and data exchange with um, uh, third-party applications, for example, your own application and so on. Uh, that's why um, Hectera is highly mm, um, optimized to use its functionality uh, via API. But we'll talk about this point a bit later on. Uh, in general, uh, when, mm, the, when we started to investigate the sphere of agriculture, we found out that it's very wide and uh, has a huge um, amount of topics, uh, the variety of uh, aspects and so on. We even created uh, such a scheme which um, reflects the, complex the complexity of the sphere and the variety of its needs. Uh, here you may find um, uh, precision farming, weather, quality control, NDVI, uh, fuel consumption, planning, uh, short-term planning, long-term planning, and many, many other things. In the whole, 
if all would busy us, uh, let's say, for about 15 years or something like that. Because uh, actually all, uh, each of those aspects deserves their own separate solution or separate product. Uh, perhaps that's why Gurdam hasn't touched this sphere for so long. But finally, seeing how important agriculture is to our partners, we decided uh, to develop uh, this new application called Hectare. Uh, and um, among those topics, uh, we chose one aspect or one component which lies in the center of Hectare and forms its core and to which all functionality, present or future, will be linked. So what is this component or main function? Uh, the main functions of Hectera are detection of uh, field works or cultivations based on telematics data and the calculation of the key parameters of the cultivation. Uh, so detection of field works uh, in this detection, we use uh, unit messages and how they get into geofences or fields. It may sound a bit simple, but actually behind all this lay uh, rather tricky, uh, sophisticated algorithms uh, to do this job. And uh, what concerns the key parameters of the cultivation, uh, they are, of course, cultivated area. This is maybe the most important parameter, also overlaps and emissions. Information about the driver who performed this cultivation, also the implement and its uh, working width, um, as well as technological operation performed on the field, and finally fuel consumption. All those parameters we calculate for each cultivation in Hectare. Now, uh, how does it work? Uh, Hectare takes a lot of data from Bialon and at the same time has its proper entities which in the end make this solution highly specialized or a niche solution, how we called it. Uh, from Vialon, uh, Hectare takes units and their messages and by messages we detect uh, cultivations. Also from Vialon we take drivers and trailers. Trailers are called implements in Hectare. Also bindings of those drivers and trailers to units. And finally, users and their access rights. This is uh, information taken by Hectare from Vialon. And uh, what are specific entities of Hectare? Uh, they are crops or plants growing on the fields. Also crop rotation information, uh, technological operations, then uh, such important parameter as working width of the implement, uh, which uh, influences a lot uh, calculations of areas, and uh, cultivation. And uh, with cultivation, we mean all the mechanisms to detect cultivation, to calculate its parameters, as well as storing the results of those cultivations in our database. I guess many of you already have seen Hectare, maybe tried it during the beta testing period or maybe later on after the official release. But nevertheless, uh, I will make a brief overview of the interface of Hectare and uh, show the most significant uh, points. And first of all, of course, fields. Uh, fields uh, can appear in Hectare um, by synchronization with your geofences of your source in Vialon, or they can be imported from KML or shape files, or drawn in Hectera straight in the application. What is special about the fields in Hectera comparing with uh, geofences uh, of Vialon is uh, that they can have holes in them. It means some places of unused area, uncultivated area, where, for example, there is a pond or a building, a couple of trees growing, and so on. Uh, then uh, crop rotation. Uh, you can indicate crop rotation for each field uh, separately, beginning from the year 2000. 
it shows uh, which plant was growing in which season and uh, its dates of sowing and harvesting. Uh, next, uh, the user creates uh, their own lists of crops and technological operations in Fictera, and um, each crop has its color, and uh, the fields are colored in, in those colors on the map according to what is growing there uh, for the moment. And the technological operations are used for implements. Um, as I already told, implements are actually trailers taken from Vialon. And here in Hectara, they uh, obtain two more parameters comparing with Vialon. And one parameter is technological operation uh, that this implement uh, usually makes. And another parameter is the working width of an implement. Uh, this is a crucial parameter which influences a lot all the cal calculations of uh, cultivated area, overlaps, and emissions. And this parameter does not exist for the trailers of Vialon. It exists only in Fictera. So those five things, uh, fields, crop rotation, technological operations, crops, and implements, are interfaces where the system is set up. And when it all is configured properly, uh, the main activity of the user will be centered around two pages, uh, registrar and reports. And I will say a couple of more words about those two. Uh, maybe the most interesting things happen on the registrar page. Uh, here, potential cultivations are found and approved. We call the potential cultivations candidates. Candidate is a potential cultivation which was found by the system but not yet approved by the user. A uh, user goes through found cultivations and if uh, they seem appropriate and all data is okay, um, the user approves the cultivation and after that, uh, this cultivation goes into the database and uh, this data from this cultivation can be manipulated in different ways. Uh, to make the most of it, uh, we, uh, we recommend uh, to go through the search and registration process every day. Uh, usually, um, some person in charge like an operator or dispatcher can do the job at the end of the working day or next day in the morning, for example. And why is it so important to do it daily? Uh, because only in this case, the agronomist will have most relevant, complete, up-to-date information about what is uh, happening on their fields. And uh, this enables them to make uh, right decisions uh, knowing uh, the real situations uh, on the fields. Uh, so, next, uh, this is the detailed view of a cultivation. I've already said which parameters we consider the key parameters of a cultivation, and here we may see how it looks on the interface. Uh, First of all, general information about the field, field's name, crop, uh, and area, then timing issues, uh, when the cultivation began and ended, and uh, what was the duration, then information about the driver who made the cultivation, and machinery involved, I mean unit and implement, also technological operation performed on the field, and uh, implements working bits. And uh, finally, uh, the um, calculations uh, themselves, like uh, cultivated area as the result of this cultivation, and also overlaps uh, where um, several cultivations took place, and emissions where um, segments of the field which were not cultivated at all. Uh, and some information like uh, average speed, maximum speed, and uh, fuel consumed, and mileage uh, in the field. And in the right part of this detailed view, uh, you may see uh, how this 
information and um, those calculations are visualized in different colors. You can see um, segments of the field which were cultivated or cultivated more than once or omitted. And also uh, unit track. Uh, after the approval, uh, the cultivation gets into the database and uh, can be queried in the reports. Uh, there are different kinds of reports by driver, by field, by crop, and so on. And um, also a report contains uh, some summarized or statistical information about the whole period and uh, also the detailed view of each cultivation. Uh, like, like this one, is also available in reports as well. A report can be exported to a CSV file and opened in Excel or in some other system or manipulated in some different way. Uh, but what is the most important about the reports is that all the information available in reports can be obtained through API and transferred to other systems and used uh, there in those system as well. Uh, so uh, briefly, it was uh, like all, all the main functions we have, but uh, I just uh, would like to add a couple words about some additional functionality. As an advanced feature, we have um, a map layer configurator. It helps to add um, almost any map layer you want. It can be cadaster, weather, and DVI, satellite maps, or uh, any other layer or overlay. Uh, as soon as you have uh, necessary access, keys, and uh, links to those maps. Also, we have the option of a white label and uh, good uh, data storage conditions. I will talk a bit more about uh, that last one. Uh, almost uh, all the information is he in Hectare is stored for five years. Uh, Hectare has its own database independent from Vialon. Uh, five years is uh, the term um, when uh, the cultivations uh, registered in the system are stored. And all the numeric and textual information about those cultivations is stored like uh, cultivated areas, overlaps and emissions, fuel consumed, uh, names of drivers, trailers, implements, crops, technological operations, and so on. Uh, but, uh, uh, and this is all information you can obtain in a report, in a table of a report. And some information is stored for 11 months. Uh, this is visualization of the cultivation. Uh, those uh, segments on the map uh, drawn is in different colors and showing overlaps and emissions and where they took place. So this visual information will be stored for 11 months. And what concerns crop rotation, it is stored uh, as long as you do not delete the field from the system itself. Okay, and uh, in the beginning of the presentation, I've already told you that uh, using Hectare suggests integrational processes. This can be integration with uh, any custom software used by the end client or any third-party applications, for example, your own application. Uh, um, in general, we think that uh, at least integration with accounting system used on a farm will be required or highly appreciated. Uh, from your customer. Uh, that's why Hectera is highly um, optimized to work through API. Uh, we do not position Hectera as a definitive packaged product ready to go. Uh, furthermore, Hectera covers just one uh, aspect, even though very important, essential to any agronomist throughout the world, but only one aspect, which is detection of uh, field works and calculation of uh, their parameters. But anyway, there are other aspects and we know about them and the number of those other things uh, and their priority and importance may differ a lot from company to company and from farm to farm. So in this situation, um, any kind of uh, standard or universal uh, solution is 
um, impossible actually and uh, uh, some personalized or customized approach is needed of, and this is the thing that uh, only the integrator can do being in closer contact with the customer. Uh, so that's why offering Hectera uh, takes more effort from the integrator uh, than uh, our other niche solutions. And uh, all features I described today are available through API. And using this API, you can create your unique service and open new horizons for your businesses. Uh, it's been just two months uh, since we released Hectera and approximately half a year since we started the beta testing of the new product. But uh, already we have some impressive results and I would like to share this map with you. Uh, it shows the fields created by the users in uh, Hectera. Uh, particularly, it shows uh, the region of the world with the biggest number of fields at least for now. As you see, it's Belarus, Ukraine, Russia, some countries of Eastern Europe. Uh, but surely we have fields also in uh, Africa, Latin America, Canada, and other parts of the world. But uh, this part uh, is more active for now. So I would encourage you to join the club and make your own contribution into this map. And maybe next conference I will be showing a different part of the world as more active in Hectara. Uh, as a final point, I would like to share with you some sources of further information about the application. And they are a user guide, API documentation for developers, and the links to both of those documentations are available from Hectara interface from the user's menu, unless you have the white label, of course. And also, I would recommend uh, you to watch the introductory webinar held in June. Uh, although we have released a couple of updates since that webinar, I think it's still up to date and can be used to uh, study Hectera because it covers the main uh, concepts, algorithms, and mechanisms of um, how Hectera works and, in general, the workflow recommended by us. Also, if you would like to contact us, the developers, and share your feedback, uh, also as well as um, ideas and proposals, you may write a message in our forum in a separate branch dedicated to Hectera. Or you can contact me in person via email or Skype. So uh, that was Katerina Alexandrova, product manager for Hectera. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Katerina. Hope it's not over. Maybe you have any questions on the solution? Yes, we have a question from, from there. Uh, what type of devices are you seeing normally used on the equipment that, and, and how often do they update? I mean, it looks like it's every second to get that kind of detailed information. Is that correct? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? What types of equipment tracking devices mm -hmm. do you normally see in what you've already developed along with the update rate or time periods to get that type of detail on the maps that you showed? Mm. Actually, we didn't uh, do such an analysis. Uh, I think our clients use different kinds of um, trackers and maybe it's better to talk to, to them personally to, to ask or what type of equipment they use, because uh, I actually don't know. Yeah, one uh, more we question. We are not linked to any particular type that could be um, almost anything. Yeah. But uh, the question of precision is very important here. If GPS is not uh, very close to re reality, so the cal calculations of Hectera would be also approximate. Yeah. Um, is there any interface with weather forecast uh, or even uh, weather station if the customer has weather station to uh, monitor the temperature and the humidity in the field? 
this is my first question. My second question um, uh, is, is, is there is support for greenhouse agriculture, for the parameter for greenhouse agriculture? Okay. Uh, weather stations, uh, the first question. Uh, you may use the map configurator I mentioned as an advanced feature uh, to connect weather stations and display uh, information from them. You can try this option to, to, to use uh, information about weather. And, and no, no functionality about notification, no. And the second question? Greenhouse agriculture. There is a special parameter for greenhouse agriculture. Um, there are no special parameters for uh, greenhouse agriculture, but you can try to these particular features, and maybe they will work in greenhouse as well. Why not? Okay. Any more questions from the audience? I think you had one. No? Oh, yes, there is one. Uh, okay, yeah. so I just would like to uh, help for answering the question, the first uh, question for the devices because we happen to have one of our partner using our MDT uh, Android tablet uh, and with the app and then uh, register to Wallon platform and do the agriculture um, this of the function to have very accuracy, tracking, auto driving, auto farming, something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. So, okay. but the application should be like a special one, and then the device should have a special GPS or GLONASS module, which can fulfill the accuracy and plus the RTK system. So, hope I okay, answer. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can you can discuss it with uh, Tommy on your booth, for example, or anything like. Don't don't miss him. <laughs> okay, and we had one more question from De Detroit High Tech, I suppose. There uh, other languages than English. It's uh, integrated in uh, the application. Uh, French, Spanish, and uh, languages of the application. Yes. yes. Uh, now we have integrated um, English, Russian, um, Spanish, Romanian. I think Romanian and. Our languages are added uh, to the system constantly, and um, you probably know that uh, our partners add the languages. Uh, if you want to translate Hectera into your language, you can contact our technical support, and they will uh, send you authorization information for this. Any particular language that uh, interests you? French and Spanish. Of, um, Spanish, yes, there is Spanish right now. French, no, not yet, but you may translate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of our partners do this with Vialon and they do it good, so you may take your chance. And uh, do you have any other questions? We have some more, some more time for it. Okay, no more questions. You can always find Katerina uh, somewhere here. She's near. Uh, so remember her and find her if you have any questions after the presentation. And now we thank you thank for you. the attention. Thank you, uh, Katerina.